In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install stone veneer like a pro. And if you're not familiar with stone veneer, it's an excellent way to add characteristic and style to your house without breaking the bank. And it's beautiful and durable and can last for years. So if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So without further ado, let's get started. This section of the house is where we will be installing the stone veneer. And this is part two of a three part series. In part one, I showed you how to install the underlayment metal lath and the scratch coat. So in part two, we are going to be installing the stone veneer. There are several manufacturers out there for the stone veneer. And typically they sell two types, corners and flats. So I always get corners because the corners give it a nice finished look on the edges and it gives it a nice three-dimensional appearance as if there was a solid stone right in this corner. So I always prefer to use corners. And then the flats obviously just stick flat to the wall and this is what fills in the bulk of the wall. So I just want to show you the two different types that you need to be aware of. In order to stick the stone veneer to the wall I need to mix up a mortar mix first and the ratio I use is a two to one and that's going to be two parts sand, one part cement. And the cement I'm going to be using is type S cement. And I always dump it into a bucket first because it's easier to shovel out that way. And the tools we're going to need is a shovel and a half inch drill with a mixing blade on it. And then just a few buckets. So let me show you what you need to do first. So first we need to get two scoops of sand and preferably clean sand. And we're going to go put that into the mixing bucket. And then after that, what we need to do is get one scoop of cement. And like I said, with this bucket, it's much easier to scoop out this way. And then what we need to do is get our clean water. And that's what I got in this bucket. And we're gonna go ahead and just place a small amount of water first because you don't wanna put too much water in first because if it's too liquidy, it's gonna be harder to try to get it to the right consistency. So just a little bit of water first and go ahead and mix that up. So as you can see, that's too dry. So we need to go ahead and place a little bit more water in it. And again, not too much, just enough to uh, get it nice and damp and then mix it up. We're looking for a consistency that's like peanut butter. Just a little bit more water. All right, and as you can see, it sticks to that blade really nicely. And that is what you want as far as consistency, something that's like peanut butter. Then after you get it to the consistency you want, go ahead and mix it up thoroughly for a few more minutes. All right, now we're ready to install the stone veneer with this mortar. I always start with the stone veneer corners first and I start from the top and I work down and I always leave a half inch gap between the corners because that gives me plenty of room to grout around. And also it's very important to start with the corners because that gives you an area to go off of when you're starting your stone veneer. And since I got a peak, I'm gonna have to start at the top without corners obviously, but once I come down to where the corners are, then I definitely need to have the corners installed first. And also, I just wanted to let you know, I started here and worked down already because it's way easier to record installation of corners at eye level instead of being up on a scaffolding. So now what I'm gonna do is show you how to butter up your corner before you install it. This is the corner I'm gonna be installing next. So as you noticed on this side, it's very rough and textured. So it gives a place for the mortar to adhere to real easy. So all I do is scoop up just enough to give me a half inch coverage on the backs. And this is just a simple trowel that's used for bricks. This is a seven inch trowel. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put some on the other side. And I'm gonna just back butter it like so and smooth it out like I said about a half inch and always make sure I cover the whole back side really well so just something like that and as you can see we got full coverage and now we're ready to stick it onto the wall all right so all I got to do is lift it up to the corner and like I said try to aim for about a half inch reveal at least that's the mortar joint I'm looking for press it into the corner and then just kind of wiggle it into place. 
and you're going to want to make sure you're tight and you make sure one side is not cockeyed compared to the other and try to eyeball a straight line. So, so far that looks really well. Let me go check the other side here. That looks really nice as well. So now I'm just going to hold a little pressure on it for just a moment. So after you're done holding pressure on it, now to release slowly, and that is all there is to it. What I do, I'll go ahead and try to capture as much of this loose mortar off the bottom. And up here, if there's a good bit sticking out of the top, I'll try to catch it as well. And that way I'll just recycle it when I go to install the next corner. Something else I wanted to show you, if it's really dry out, get a spray bottle full of water and spray your scratch coat and spray the stone because sometimes it's so dry out that you'll go lather up the back of this and stick it to the wall and it just soaks the moisture right out of that mortar really quick and it's hard to work with sometimes so I always recommend carrying a spray bottle full of water and that way you can work when it's really dry out. Something really important to note before you start your stone veneer and this goes for the corners and for the flats as you can see I got six different boxes of corners here and they all have different shades to them of color. So as you can see, this box is more dark, this box is more light. So what you wanna do, grab different corners from each box, so that way when you're installing your stone veneer onto the corners, you have a variety just like you see here. Cause you don't want them all just one color, then all of a sudden they switch to a totally different color. If you are interested in any of the tools you see in this video to install the stone veneer, be sure to check out my Amazon store. The link is in the description below. And if you do make a purchase through one of my links, I get a small commission with some extra cost to you and help support the channel. As you can see, I got all the corners on this bump out and I went ahead and set up the scaffolding and went ahead and did the gable. So that way I can get that out of the way so I can show you at eye level how to install the flats. And there's a couple pointers I wanted to point out before I show you how to install the flats. The first pointer I wanted to show you is I went ahead and installed a board going across the top of this window and put a piece of plywood over it. So when I was installing stone above, in case a piece fell off, a stone that is, it didn't come down and smash the J channel on this window or crack anything else on the window. So that's a little tip. You wanna make sure anything below is protected in case you drop stone or mortar. Next thing I wanted to point out is, I'm sure you noticed this downspout looks a little funky. That's cause I had to take it off side of the house and turn it sideways so I can get the stone in behind it. Then after the stone's installed, I'm gonna have to cut it down, adjust it to fit properly. But yet I still wanted to collect rainwater while I was working on the stone. I didn't want the water coming down and then splashing on the side of the house as if there was no guttering. Let's move on to the next pointer. Whenever you order a bulk amount of stone, a lot of times they'll come in these large boxes instead of the small boxes. So when that happens, what I like to do is uncover both boxes or if there's multiple boxes, uncover them all. And I like to pick out across the tops of them equally so that way you get the correct variety throughout the layout, just as if we did the corners, but instead of having six boxes, we only have these two large ones. And also what I like to do when I mix up my mortar, I'll go ahead and collect them into a box this size and then carry them to where I'm going to be installing so that way I have my stone there so I want to keep going back and forth to the crates. I'm going to show you how you want to get everything ready before you start sticking the flats on the wall. So as you can see, I got an assortment of the flats out of those big boxes and I carried them over here in this little box and I got my mortar ready to go, my trial and the water bottle. You want to have all this stuff ready to go because you don't want to be racing to try to get the mortar onto the wall before it dries and then run around looking for everything else. So now that I got everything here ready to go, let me show you how to butter up one of these flats and put it on the wall. Here's the stone I'm going to be doing first. It's much more dry out than it was when I did the corners. So I'm going to take my spray bottle and just spray a little water on the back of this. It just helps that mortar set into the stone a little better. Then all I'm going to do is just take the mortar and scoop it right onto the back of the stone, right like so. And then I'm just gonna make sure I get full coverage on the whole back of that stone. And then I like to take my trowel, even it out to where there's about a half inch across the whole back. So something like that. And it, you don't have to be fancy, but you just want it uniform. That's the main thing. 
So that looks really nice. So let's go put this on the wall. I'm going to be installing the stone right here. And because it's dry out, I'm going to dampen the surface. And now all I gotta do is take my stone, lay it right where I want it. And I want a half inch reveal roughly between stone to stone. And now that I got it about where I want it, I'm just going to put pressure on it and just wiggle it up and down and left and right until it's adhered to the wall. And as the mortar pushes out around it, I like to clean it off as I go and recycle the mortar. So I'll take it off like this, then throw it right back into my mortar bucket. And in this case, I'm gonna put it tight against the window here. So once I get it to where I want it, that looks good. I'm just gonna hold tension on it for just a moment or two. Typically, it only takes about 30 seconds when it's warm out, if that, and then we can just release the pressure now I'm just gonna slowly release pressure and you can see it's sticking right to the wall. Now you're gonna to have to let this set up for at least 24 hours before you grout around it. But onto the next step in this process, we're gonna find a stone that goes here. So it's like a big puzzle filling in all this. So now we're looking for one that has a shape that can fit right into this space. Let's go find it. Here are my options I have with me to pick from to fill in that space. So after looking at all these, this little one's probably the best fit for that space. So again, it's like a big puzzle. You gotta pick and choose various shapes and sizes to fit together. And in this case, this is the best one. Out of everything you gotta do to install stone on the wall, definitely the most time consuming part from what I found was trying to find the correct shapes and sizes to fit in the puzzle, so to speak. So just so you know, and if you have somebody that can help you find the right size while someone else places it onto the wall, it's gonna be a much quicker process. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and keep installing this whole wall with stone. Just a little fun fact, the R value added to the wall using the stone veneer is 0.43. And to put that in perspective, a two by four wall is an R value of 13 after it's insulated. Sometimes when you're installing the stone veneer, you're not gonna be able to find the perfect piece, so you gotta make it. So as you can see here, here's one I had to break to make this piece, and let me show you how to do that. Here's one I had to break before. I'm gonna show you how I did it. So let's say I need to break it right here. So all we gotta do is get a straight edge, a straight board, or a block or something, lay it right up to where we wanna break it, then take your hammer and just tap it, and it's gonna break it off roughly to where you need it. And as you can see, it's gonna vary sometimes. So let's say, again, let's say we wanted to break this off right here. So another way you can do it is lay it on its side, then hit it from the back. And then you can break it that way as well. So you can practice and see what works best for you. And also another way to do it is take the wet saw and cut down, let's say right in the back here about halfway through. And then that way when you break it, it's gonna give you an exact break. As of right now, I have two days of installing the stone veneer and this is what we got done so far. If you're ready to see how to grout the stone veneer, check out this video. It'll help you out.